And interestingly, on this first trip, one of the uh, some of the famous animals that they found, they're the first to see uh, pronghorn sheep, or other what we usually call antelope. Uh, they are the first to find uh, of Americans, anyway, to find coyotes. Uh, they were fascinated with uh, the prairie dog, uh, and they spent a whole day. They found this prairie dog village and so forth, and they spent a whole day trying to capture. Uh, one and so forth. So they first do go, it's like, oh, let's dig up this hole. And it's like, well, you can't find it. And then they get a big hole, they're big holes, and they're sticking it down the uh, holes, trying to get these prairie dogs to come out. They still can't catch a prairie dog. Then they get the whole crew to get buckets of water, and they're pouring them down the prairie dog hole, and finally get a prairie dog to come out, and they grab him and so forth, and they uh, capture him, and they've got him at the port, and they send him back, and they send him, and the, this poor little prairie dog makes it all the way back to Thomas Jefferson alive. Uh, in the cage that they sent Thomas Jefferson, this prairie dog, uh, to show them a new animal that they found. And as they're traveling west now, the Indians have warned them about this too. They said, well, you're going to find unbelievably large bears. And they're referencing the grizzly bear. And probably Lewis and Clark uh, were a little bit, maybe a little bit arrogant. They said, oh, yeah, well, these Indians are afraid of bears. But all they've got is bows, and the British have sold them some lame little muskets and so forth and so forth. But we've got Kentucky long rifles, and we're great shots and so forth. So they're fascinated, and they really want to find some grizzly bears and so forth. And so and they eventually find them. And the first grizzly bear that they find, uh, I think there's like eight of them all shooting the bear. And they all shoot, and they all hit the bear, and the bear keeps coming at them. I mean, he's taking a couple bullets in the head and the, through the lungs and the heart, and these bears keep coming. Uh, at them, and they bear. At one point, they had to jump off a 20-foot cliff to get into the water to try to get away from this bear. And another time, Lewis almost gets caught by a bear. He's out in the water, and he's got this uh, uh, kind of pole sword that he carries. That also he can mount his gun on, and, and he swims out to the deep water. And he's going to try to have to beat this bear off with like a, a bat, but, but lucky for him, the bear uh, decided against it and, and moved on. And anyway, in a great line and. Uh, Lewis's journal and so forth, he eventually says, he goes, I think that the, the men's curiosity about this animal has been satisfied. <laughs> no longer too curious about this one. So they eventually don't want to mess with the bears too much. Uh, but anyway, so they're, they're running into these bears and they hit these falls and, uh, and so uh, they're, they, they're, they're trying to drag the canoes that they still have. This is when Lewis, when they get to the top of the falls, he's trying to get out this foldable boat and they put animal skins on it and they can't make it watertight so they have to give up on uh, on that and so they're still struggling along uh, uh, the river and there's some great moments where they don't know there's a great moment where the river splits and they don't know which direction to go and uh, in this instance they take uh, every to a man, they record the the records to a man. Everybody except for Lewis and Clark wanted to go one direction, and Lewis and Clark said, "No, we think the Missouri River is this other uh, is this other way." And they and Lewis and Clark ended up being right, and they went that way. And the men recorded it's like, "Well, we all think you're wrong, but we trust you. We're going to go with with uh, our leaders here and and uh, follow that." Well, they're coming up though. Uh, not marked well on that uh, map, but once they get past the Great Falls, um, well, then, then there's a three forks is uh, important, but then they're, they're actually going south there where it says Shoshone, if you can see that. And they're hitting the Bitterroot Mountains, which are part of the Rocky Mountains. Now keep in mind, you know, with this whole trip, like I think the only thing you can compare this trip to is like the United States going to the moon. Like this is the equivalent of going to the moon. And this is more impressive, frankly, than going to the moon. Like when we went to the moon, like we knew what the moon looked like. Like you can see the moon. And when they're going to the moon, even in Apollo 13, when they had trouble and so forth, they can still talk to Houston. Like these guys, they can't talk to Houston. They can't talk to Washington. They're on their own. They're making their own decisions. And they have no idea what they're going to see and find. Like they're the, they're the first. That have gone. They have no reports. And particularly here, they have no reports. And where are they from? Like both Lewis and Clark are from Virginia. And what are they expecting? They probably are expecting the Appalachian Mountains. They're what they're familiar with, and they've been told, well, there's big mountains you're going to hit. 
And the Appalachian Mountains are beautiful and, and prominent and pretty, but you can go up the Appalachian Mountains fairly easily, and then you go back down the other side. And they're, thinking, and they're still hoping, like the dream of Columbus was that there'd be this all-water route from the Old World to Asia. And that dream still hasn't been given up yet. They're still, Jefferson and Lewis are still hoping, well, maybe, you know, there's, maybe there's still an all, if we can go up the Missouri River, it probably, they're expecting it as like, okay, well, it's going to hit, you know, rivers come from mountains. And so we'll just come to the mountain, and then maybe we can make a quick jump over the other side, and then there should be the Columbia River. There'll be a river that'll take us to the Pacific, and we'll have this all water route. So they're still hoping that, and even maybe with the first mountains, you know, that they're going up, and they go over that ridge, like, oh no, you know, it's unbelievably gorgeous, and that's going to kill us. Like, there's no <laughs> water route. There's just nothing but mountain after mountain after mountain after mountain after mountain that are bigger than any of the mountains that they've seen before. And so they realize we got we have to get horses or we're going to die out here. And so they're desperate to find the Shoshone Indians who they're hoping and counting on will sell them horses. And so trying to make this, they, they have trouble finding them. And there's a, a really disappointing moment. They eventually, but I'll skip to you, that they eventually find them. And then they start trying to negotiate with the, with the Shoshone to sell them horses. And they say, well, you know, uh, hello, you know, we'd like to uh, buy some horses. And the Shoshone said, no. And they said, well, OK, uh, please, can we buy some uh, horses? And then, no. Uh, yeah, but if you don't sell us the horses, uh, we're going to die out here. Like, we didn't tell you to come out here in the first place, so you can't get by the way. And so this is getting more and more intense. And incidentally, I described this simple conversation. Keep in mind, this is one of the most important games of telephone and the most difficult games of telephone that you've ever heard of. If you know the game of telephone, you know, whisper something in someone's ear and then pass this message on. Well, keep in mind, this message is Lewis and Clark talk to their translator, Drulliard, in English. Drouillard talks to, to Toussaint Charbonneau in French. Toussaint <coughs> Charbonneau talks to Sacagawea in Hidatsa. And then Sacagawea talks to the Shoshone in Shoshone. And then the Shoshone, and then, so back and forth, you're having, you know, from Shoshone to Hidatsa to French uh, to English, and back and forth, and you're trying to communicate with these folks. Well, as this is going on, Sacagawea keeps looking at the chief that they've uh, run into, of the Shoshone that they're talking to, and he keeps looking at her, and then all of a sudden she said, brother! <laughs> and he said, sister! <laughs> and they're brother and sister. And they had been re she had been kidnapped and sold into slavery uh, by the Hidatsa, and through, I don't know how you prefer to explain coincidences in history, but one of the most unbelievable coincidences in history is brother and sister now have been reunited uh, <clears throat> by this Lewis and Clark expedition. And so you said, well, sister, okay, sure, I will sell you. You can have horses. So, <laughs> so now that brother and sister have gotten together, uh, they have these horses. Well, now they're going to survive, but this still isn't easy um, <clears throat> uh, going, so they still have to try to make it through the Rocky Mountains. Uh, the Shoshone lo loan them uh, this guy named Old Toby, uh, who takes them, who tries to guide them through, but they're starving, uh, they're, they're fighting the snow, they barely make it through uh, the, these Rocky Mountains, and they run into the Nez Perce uh, Indians on the other side, who are very, who act very friendly um, towards them. Uh, and then they're getting excited that we're going to make it to the Pacific Ocean. They find the Columbia, you know, they've found the Columbia River. They know that that leads to the Pacific. It's quite rapid uh, and has lots of rapids in it. The Nez Perce Indians help them make uh, cut out canoes and so forth. And rather, they say, well, we're just going to raft down there. And the Nez Perce Indians say, no, that'll kill you. And so forth. They're like, no, we're going to go. We can make it. Uh, and so off they go. And the, the Indians are, uh, some of the different tribes were, uh, standing on the side on the, on the side of the shore, waiting for all of the loot to come that was going to when they drowned and do this. But somehow they survive and they make it uh, down. And Clark records in his you know general the sea oh what oh what joy and so forth that we finally made it to uh, to the sea. 
And uh, hard to see up there, I guess, but they're going to uh, make Fort Clatsop. up. Uh, there on the, the ocean, there was some hope <clears throat> that they would be able to pick up a, a ship there. Uh, that maybe they'd run into an American ship or, or something and pick up and actually come back going around the Cape of Good Hope, or that some of them would. Uh, there was a ship in the area, but they never spotted one another for some reason. And this, they're going to spend their second winter out at Fort Clatsop on the, uh, on the, the border. And here is just a fantastic uh, moment uh, because it really is, like there's a big debate of where are we going to put this fort. And it's not as cold, but it's super wet and they, uh, there. And so, you know, they're, they've long since lost their clothes. They're just in buckskins and uh, so forth. And so this is, uh, their clothes are rotting out. And it's like, well, what Indians do we want to settle near and so forth? Should we move back up the Columbia River some? Should we stay more on the coast and hope a ship comes by? Where are we going? You know, there's lots of debate. And this is a life and death decision that you're really wrestling with is what's going to happen here when we make this decision. And the great moment is that they decide in, I think, a very American fashion, let's take a vote. And that's what they, they do. And they take a vote and everybody gets to vote, uh, including York. Uh, and so obviously slaves or African Americans won't have the general vote for many years after that. But York got a vote, and his vote counted just as much as Lewis's and just as much as Clark's. And Sacagawea gets a, uh, gets the vote, and hers counted, and women won't have the right uh, universally to vote in the United States for even longer than that. And so you really get this taste, I think, of where the United States is eventually heading uh, in uh, demonstrated here in this uh, great democratic moment at Fort Class up with, uh, with Lewis and Clark. Uh, so, uh, they, so they have that vote, they survive the winter uh, there, and then they are very, very eager, of course, to get back. And, uh, and so uh, they start out as early as they can. Uh, they made it back to the Nez Perce uh, Indians. There's some great moments uh, here as the Nez Perce say, well, there's too much snow in the mountains. You've got to wait. They kept wanting to go, go, go. Uh, and so they uh, stayed with the Nez Perce for a long time. They did little Olympic games and had contests of uh, 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 running and shooting and, uh, and different things with the, uh, the Nez Perce. And uh, I guess I uh, initially skipped it, but that was a great moment too. Uh, when they first came out of the mountains and ran into the Nez Perce, they're almost dead. Uh, and. Uh, the Nez Perce Indians, as the stories go, that a lot of the, the number of the Nez Perce said, let's, uh, the, all these folks came stumbling out of the woods, the, there's about 20 of them, let's kill them. And it's tempting to kill them because uh, this is the richest, if the Nez Perce kill them and take their stuff, they will instantly become the most powerful Indian tribe in the area because the Nez Perce didn't have guns at this time and the British had traded guns to other tribes uh, and so that this would arm the Nez Perce in a way that they had before. Uh, then they would have all this wealth. So it's tempting. And uh, uh, again, uh, a Nez Perce woman who had been captured by a tribe and sold into slavery and had been treated and then had gotten to return and had been treated well uh, by whites earlier came and said, don't you do it. You treat, they treated me nicely when I was captured. You treat them nicely uh, now. So at least initially the United States had a very good relationship with uh, the Nez Perce and that uh, many years later Chief Joseph will even reference that, that well when we first met Lewis and Clark we had this great relationship with the United States and then this uh, unfortunately fell apart later. Uh, but they, anyway they come back, uh, Lewis and Clark are very eager to go, they take off before the Nez Perce say that you should take off and then to their embarrassment, they almost get killed in the mountains again and have to come back because it's too snowy um, and stay with the Nez Perce a little longer and then have them help them guide them through the mountains uh, again. And then in a bold decision, and why the map there has various different directions, <coughs> um, they decide to split the party and they split it in about five different groups because they're trying to explore as much as they can. So Clark says, I'll go down to what we now know as the Yellowstone River and do that one. Uh, 
Lewis goes more north and sticks with more of the Missouri tributaries and is trying to explore uh, that. Um, and these are times too in the before they cross the mountains and after uh, that they're getting impatient and uh, Lewis frequently isn't at his best there. So when they're um, west of the Rockies and coming back, a lot of the Indians, uh, some of the Indian tribes there were trying to steal from them. They once stole Seaman, uh, their dog, and Lewis says, like, we're getting that dog, they're like, we'll kill them all, like, start shooting if you catch them. And they let the dog uh, go, and uh, so some of their frustrations were coming out. And when they get to the uh, eastern side of the mountains, uh, up there where it says uh, Blackfeet, that was a, a tribe of Indians, that's where uh, the Blackfeet uh, took were taking some of Lewis's and, and the few men that he had their horses uh, and the uh, and two Indians then are killed and stopping them from taking their uh, horses and then Lewis uh, hightails it out of there because he's expecting uh, retaliatory bands of Blackfeet to come and, and hunt them uh, down. But they agree to meet and somehow figure out, that, somehow pull it off that they both groups kind of, or all the groups kind of came back together where the Yellowstone and the Missouri come together um, and, uh, and, and get back together uh, then and will start the trip down. And, in, and just before they got together at the, um, where the Yellowstone and Missouri meet, um, if you, there, <coughs> Lewis, with his group is hunting, they're hunting uh, elk, and they're all in you know buckskin type of clothing. And I don't know if you've heard the phrase or like my parents when I couldn't find something would you know say like, well, gee, you're blind in one eye and you can't see out of the other. Uh, we're looking for for something. Well, there's a guy on the trip who is blind in one eye and is incredibly nearsighted in the other. And for some reason, he was also helping uh, with the hunting, and he manages uh, to shoot. Uh, Lewis, like Lewis is trying to shoot an elk and is firing, and then all of a sudden, bam, he has been uh, shot. And I don't want to be, you know, sophomoric, and it's, and it's not funny. He almost had his hip shattered, but it did, uh, but it did miss his hip, uh, but go through both of his uh, buttocks uh, on the shot. And so uh, Lewis, and so Clark, when he meets up with Clark, Clark is like, what is, what are you doing? Uh, and so forth, has to help him clean out the uh, wounds. And so for a number of weeks, uh, as they start uh, kind of racing down the, uh, back down the Missouri River, Lewis has the embarrassing position of that he has to just kind of lay in the boat, stomach down, uh, and so forth, because he can't walk, uh, and uh, it's too, uh, his backside is too sore to sit on, and so forth, so he just has to uh, ride laying down, stomach uh, down on the boat. But he uh, returns, to, uh, returns to help, and now, of course, they're super excited because they're going down the Missouri River, so instead of four miles or so a day and so forth, they're making uh, you know, 30, 40, 80 miles a day. They come back uh, towards St. Louis. They're shocked as they keep passing trappers that Americans like to explore west. And the people are already going up the Missouri uh, River to uh, take advantage of uh, trapping beaver uh, primarily. And all of them that are passing, like, hey, we thought you guys were dead, and so forth. It's nice to see you, and so forth. And they have been gone for a couple of, uh, almost two years. And it seemed like only Jefferson, uh, only Thomas Jefferson was still holding out hope or thinking, well, no, they might still make it, they might still make it back, and so forth. So the bells of St. Louis ring out, uh, and, uh, and they, have, they have returned as uh, heroes now and have, ex have explored this. If you go uh, backwards to the... Go back to where it uh, says William Clark. So this is 1806 that they get uh, that they get back, um, and uh, they're all paid very well, and they're all given land. Uh, Lewis and Clark the most, and then but the other men get land grants and, uh, and so forth as well. And anyway, just as a reminder, as you can see, they get back in 1806. Well, William Clark really kind of gets to live out, um, you know, a, a dream, like he's gone on this dream trip, gone on this dream adventure, uh, he comes back, uh, he pretty quickly marries uh, essentially a childhood uh, sweetheart uh, and so forth. Uh, they quickly, uh, 
they, they get married, and then they quickly have a, a baby. Their firstborn is a boy who he names Meriwether Lewis Clark. So, so kind of lives out this great uh, ending. Uh, if you go to Meriwether Lewis, so back one slide. Uh, unfortunately, it's, uh, this is also one of the great tragedies of American history as well. So they're back in 1806, and Lewis is, is only going to live to 1809. And whereas everything seemed to go well for Clark when he when they got back, the exact opposite happened with Lewis. So uh, Thomas Jefferson named him governor of the Louisiana Territory, uh, which was a great position, but just was not, Lewis was not a politician and wasn't cut out for being uh, a governor. Um, <clears throat> they've all suffered from diseases and so forth, including malaria, and we're pretty sure that uh, Lewis had malaria in a terrible fashion, and he's taking opium uh, to, uh, to mitigate this. Uh, he's drinking too much alcohol at this point, and for a long time, and Jefferson had known this, uh, that Lewis uh, was very prone to uh, what they would call melancholy at the, at the time. Uh, we probably, you know, I'm not comfortable trying to, uh, well, I'm not qualified to psychoanalyze any, uh, anyone, much less somebody in history and so forth, but lots of people speculate that he probably would carry the term of manic depressive uh, in today. And so Jefferson would talk about, well, and Lewis seemed to keep that under control during the adventure, and, and Thomas Jefferson would talk about that, well, with that daily excitement and, and the demands of the adventure that Lewis uh, was able to deal with that, but he just didn't seem to be able to uh, adjust back to kind of regular life. And he very much wanted to get married, and he tried courting several different girls, all of which turned him down. His 